This is the second part of this section four or five. We talked about basis. Now we're going to talk about dimension, and they are very much linked together. So dimension is the number of vectors in the basis. So the dimension is the number of vectors in the basis. Right, so the standard basis for R2 has two vectors in it, right? One, zero, zero, one. So the dimension would be two. If you have only the zero vector in a set, then we don't count the zero vector as a vector. In other words, if that set V is only the zero vector, then the dimension of V is zero. So if you know the dimension of Rn is just going to be n, right? The set of uh, R4, let's say, the dimension is just going to be 4. You're going to have four vectors in the basis for anything in R4. What is the dimension of P sub n? the set of polynomials of degree n or less. Well, don't forget that you've got a constant, right? Because you have like a 1 plus x plus x squared and so forth. So really, you have as many powers as you have plus 1. What is the dimension of an m by, of an m by n matrix? Well, remember we did the 2 by 2 matrix in the last video? The 2 by 2 matrix gave us four matrices in the basis. It turns out that it's going to be the product of those two numbers down there. So if you have all the three by four matrices, it's going to take you 12 elements in that basis. And so the dimension would be 12. You're going to need a one in the first spot, then a one in the second spot, then a one in the third spot. And there are 12 of them as you rotate around. So what if you have a subspace of an n dimensional vector space? There's two facts that you'll be able to pull out of this. One, and I'll call this W. One is that the dimension of that subspace is finite. Because if you have an n-dimensional vector space, then you're already constrained by some finite value. And that's where the second one is going, is that the dimension of the subspace has to be less than or equal to the dimension of the original vector space. So it could be the same, but it certainly can't be any more. Here's a question that might look a little funny looking. Turns out it's a really easy question to solve. So find a basis and the dimension for the subspace W of R4. Here's W. I've got 5t, I got negative 3t, t, and t, where t is a real number. What's the basis? I can solve this by looking at it. The basis for w is 5, negative 3, 1, 1. Anything in w can be written as a linear combination of those four elements in that order in that vector. Because there's only one vector in the basis, the dimension then is 1. All right, are they all that easy? Well, some of them are kind of close. Here, let's try this one. Suppose W, same set of directions, is the set S plus 4T, T, S, 2S minus T. All right, let's separate these things. So I'm going to separate it into one vector plus another vector. So over here, you notice that there's an s plus 4t in the first position. So I'll put the s here, and I'll put the 4t over there. Right? This second element has one t but no s's. So I'm going to put a 0 in the s space and a 1 over here. The third one has an s but no t. Right? So I could put a t here. Let's, let's be consistent for a minute. And then what's in the last spot? The last spot is a 2s over here and a negative t over here. So now let's pull out that s, and I get 1, 0, 1, 2. Pull out the t, and I get 4, 1, 0, negative 1. 
All right. So anything in that W set can be written as linear combinations of two vectors. That means that the basis is the set that contains the vectors 1, 0, 1, 2, and 4, 1, 0, negative 1. How many vectors are in that basis? There should be two, right? 1, 0, 1, 2 is one of the vectors, and 4, negative, 4, 1, 0, negative 1 is the other vector, so the dimension is 2. The only other thing you would want to check is to make sure that the vectors are not linear combinations of each other. In this case, because there's only two vectors in there, the only thing we would have to check actually is to see if they're scalar multiples of each other, and they are not scalar multiples of each other. Right? 1 times 4 is 4, 0 times 4 is not 1. All right, let's take a look at another one. Dimension in subspace, and I'm going to give you a set of vectors. So find the dimension of the subspace W of R4 spanned by this set. We're going to specify them in order, vector 1, vector 2, vector 3, equals. The first vector would then be negative 1, 2, 5, 0. I'll give you the second vector is 3, 0, 1, negative 2. And the third vector as negative 5, 4, 9, 2. Well, there's not enough vectors, right? Because I'm working in R4, but I've only got three vectors. But let's try something. Let's take the first vector and drop it down the columns of a matrix, negative 1, 2, 5, 0. Take the second vector and drop that down the columns of a matrix. So it's 3, 0, 1, negative 2. The third one then will be negative 5, 4, 9, 2. And let's throw the zeros in to see if I can come up with anything besides a trivial solution. All right, row reduce this. There's a little row reducing magic. It's kind of like my aunt loves watching cooking shows. Whenever I go over her house, they're cooking, and then all of a sudden, they put the thing in the oven that they're going to cook, and they turn around and go, oh, look, all of a sudden, we happen to have one in the oven that's already cooked, and here's what it looks like when it's done. So this is like cooking show matrix reduction. Look. I happen to have a matrix that's already row reduced over here. What does this tell me? Well, for one thing, it tells me I need a parameter. So let's let C sub 3 be T. If C sub 3 is T, then look at the row up here where you have C sub 2 minus T equals 0. That means that C sub 2 is also T. And then in the top row, it says C sub 1 plus 2T is equal to 0. So C sub 1 is negative 2T. All right, so pull out your T, and you're left with negative 2, 1, 1, which means I can write negative 2 times the first vector plus the second vector plus the third vector is equal to 0, meaning that if I take the V1 and V2 and move it over to the other side, I get V3 equals 2v1 minus v2. Another way of stating this is that vector 3 is actually a linear combination of vector 1 and vector 2. Now remember when we set up this um, span, we don't want to include vectors that are linear combinations of each other. So the span of w is only vector 1 and vector 2. We wouldn't include the third vector because it's already a linear combination of the other two. So what is the dimension of this um, space? The dimension of W is 2 because there's two vectors in the basis. We're not going to include the third one because it's already a linear combination of the other two. As long as those two are there, we don't need to add more. This leads us to the last theorem in this section, which is this. If you have a vector space of dimension n. All right, so this is a little theorem. Again, you can read the whole thing in the book, but this is like the short version. So let's say you've got v as a vector space of dimension n. 
then if you've got n linearly independent vectors, means that s is a basis. And if the vectors span v, if they span the vector space, then s is a basis. What does that mean? That means you only need to show one. So if you've got four linearly independent vectors in R4, then you've already got a basis without checking span. Or if you've taken those linear combinations and set them equal to zero, and you have only the trivial solutions, then you already know it's a basis. So either one will work depending on what you have. So this one down here is telling me that the C1 V1 plus C2 V2 Cn Vn equals zero gives me only the trivial solution. So if you have four vectors in R4, you can choose to set that linear combination up, set it equal to the zero vector. If they have a trivial solution, then you're done. Or you can show that those vectors are linearly independent, then you're done. So either way, one or the other, but both are not necessary in that case.